coming live from Vancouver, Canada, is our guest tonight. Welcome to this very special edition of the KJ Masterclass Live, the show which ensures that you profit from your time spent here with experts, either through their industry insights, information, or simply learning from them. And today we'll be having a lot of learning about life uh, from Sam Thiera, our guest. So we'll come, come to that. But before I move forward, may I request you to subscribe, follow, like, and comment on whichever platform you are watching or listening to this show on. And today, as I said, we have Sam Thiera, founder and chief motivating officer at Ignite the Dream Coaching and Consulting, a platform that engages his audience to define their path. He's also the author of Lost and Found, Seeking the Path, uh, Seeking the Past and Finding Myself. So we'll be talking about uh, his journey to India to find himself. Welcome to the show, Sam. Uh, what a pleasure to be here. Thank you for the opportunity to share my story. Welcome, Sam. Welcome, Sam. So let me ask you this way. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's a uh, different sort of a day today. Mm -hmm. On a day when, you know, humanity is trying to look at the unseen universe through the web telescope. Those pictures, I, mm -hmm. I don't know if you have seen them, but those I are, have. you know, th those are... Simply, you don't know, describe the universe. Mm -hmm. But I guess, in some ways, the journey to ourselves, to our insight, mm -hmm. to know ourselves, mm -hmm. is perhaps deeper than, we, than that if we understand it and look at it that way. Right. I look I at your journey to find yourself that way. So oh. tell, yes. So tell us about your journey to India. Mm -hmm. where you were a foreigner going to a land that should not be foreign. Please. No, absolutely. And, and just going back to your uh, reference to those magnificent images, one of the things that I reflect on is the fact that, you know, if you think about it, there are billions and billions of stars that are out there. But if you think about ourselves, each individual, billions and billions of cells within us, Maybe we are the center. Each of us is maybe the center of the universe. Billions on this side, billions on the other. And an idea that maybe there is magnificence in who we are as individuals. And we should really embrace and appreciate that. And it relates to, as you said, this um, understanding and this journey that, uh, you know, there is a need. I think we are sometimes defined by what we do. But really, what we need to start focusing and realizing is defining ourselves based on who we are. And I came across this years ago because I'm a, I'm a British-born Canadian with my parents who are from Fiji and grandparents or grandfathers from, from India and specifically Punjab. And I always used to get asked this question, still do. In fact, uh, just this last weekend, what part of India are you from? Because visibly... I look like I'm from India. And then I say, I respond back, well, I was born in England and raised in Canada. And then they reply back, well, no, 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 your parents, what part of India are they from? And I'm like, well, my parents come from Fiji Islands, which is near Australia. They're like, wait, are you Indian? And I look at them and I said, well, my grandfathers come from Punjab or come from India. So yes. But then other people look at me and they say, mm, no, you're not Indian, you're Canadian. So I think I struggled with this aspect of identity of who am I? And the interesting thing is a lot of people struggle with that identity piece of who are they? And it doesn't matter if you're Indian, Asian, Filipino, uh, from a certain part of Africa. Uh, we have this idea and understanding of maybe who we are but we struggle with that piece of identity. And I can explain to you how I, I sort of captured the essence of my identity on this trip to India that I took, if you would like. Yes, yes, indeed. That's that's the topic. That's the yeah. that's the journey. Your, it is the journey you, you had, yeah. but we are travelers with you. Definitely. And I think the best way for me to describe it is before I left for India, my life was a tali a platter with segmented dishes. I'm Indian, Canadian, British, Fijian. 
Uh, for 11 years, I played in an Irish military pipe band as a drummer. So maybe there's a bit of Irish chutney on the side. But my life was always segmented. And by going to India, and I recall very specifically, and it's in the, uh, the book and I write this, is I was going to go visit uh, the Golden Temple in Amritsar. And I remember waking up at 4 a.m. that morning and had an epiphany, just this realization that I was doing this all wrong. My life, I was looking at as a Tali, but in actual fact, I'm not a Tali. I'm actually Kichiri. I'm a blend of flavors. I'm a blend of, of this uh, wonderful, you know, Kichiri is this beautiful dish of, you know, rice and all these vegetables and spices and flavors, and you mix them all together. Why am I segmenting myself like a Tali when in fact, Actually, we're all kitchery. We're all a blend of flavors. We're all a blend of cultures and identities. And I think that was the biggest realization I had by this journey to India. I mean, the essence of the trip to India was this idea of, of like you said, a foreigner going to a land that shouldn't be foreign to them, looking for a needle in a haystack, but not knowing where this haystack was. I was that far removed from our identity because i mean my my grandfather he left punjab in 1905 hopped on a steamer ship from calcutta and wound up uh ending up in fiji and that's where you know he got off and that's where my father was born got married and then um they had moved to england where i was born and then we came to canada so you could see how we are so far removed from our from our village our bend that nobody knew where our village was. Um, you know, we, we sort of knew the name of the village. It's Chadori. We knew it was six miles from Garshankar in the district of Hoshiarpur. So that's all we had. And that's all I had to go by. And I thought, I'm going to go on this journey to India because I've traveled before. But I had never gone to more of a, of a deeper reflective journey to realize this, um, our ancestral roots. The identity piece was this, was the add-on that was like, well, you know, I think I want to realize that part too. But ultimately and ideally, it was about going to India to find my ancestral roots. So that gives you an idea of the essence of the journey. And my father's never been to Punjab or he's never even been to India. A lot of my relatives have never been to India. But my dad's older brother, my Daya, he actually had gone to Punjab when he went to the village, but he passed away before anyone pulled that information from him. So you can see that this was actually a really difficult journey because all I really had was this faded photograph of people from our village, the name of the village, the town, the district. And, it, and here's the other part that was really interesting is the amount of noise people who said you won't find the village why are you even searching for it if you find it you're going to get a bad reception because they think you want their land um, so there was all this noise of why are you doing this and and it's not something you will accomplish and all but the thing is i thrive in ambiguity and uncertainty so i was like i've only got a little bit of information but you know what? I have to do this. I have to try. Because if you don't try, it's always in the shadows. What if? And I never like to have a what if in life. So that's why I embarked on this journey. And the benefit was the realization of my identity. I can go into more details about the actual journey of seeking the village, if you'd like, if, if that is something beneficial. Yes, yes please. Yes, please. In, yeah, okay. so that... We know, we know. As you as you said, uh, mm. it was a travel. You were not a tourist. No. And when you travel, you find so many things. And in that process, you find yourself. Right. Oh, totally. And and to your point, there is a difference between a tourist and a traveler. I'm a traveler. A tourist just wants to see but not experience. Whereas a traveler, I want to experience. And what I experienced in India, it was it was it was mind blowing. 
I mean, India has such magnificence, but such poverty in the balance. And, you know, it's, it's not one for me to go there and judge, but it's more of me to, uh, to see, to observe. And, you know, the poverty, I think, was the most difficult part for me. But what was really interesting about experiencing the poverty is the fact that the resilience I saw in the people was truly amazing. Like, the, and it's like they, they have their worries and their concerns, but their worries and concerns are at the fundamental level of survival. But there's this resilience, their smiles, and how they're wanting to do things for you. I think we can pull a lesson from them with regards to, oh, you're, you're worried about, you know, going to a restaurant and, you know, maybe the soup is not hot enough. That's not a worry. You know, um, I think you people need to travel to experience. So India provided me a, a, such an amazing window of, of experiences. And I'm so glad I went. Ideally, it was about really realizing India and experiencing it. So the first week we did the, the Golden Triangle, uh, Delhi, Agra, Jaipur, and experienced everything. And I, and I was like, that's a bit more of a, of a tourist, but equally at the right. same time experiencing it and being open to these experiences. But week two was the actual journey to go try to find the village. So with the photograph in hand, we got to Punjab. And then, you know, a day before I left for India, or two days, that's when this picture arrived. But a day before I left... And my... Can you tell us about this picture, Sam? Sorry to interrupt. What is oh, this no, picture? of course. Yeah, so this picture, my, gra uh, my, my Taya, he took this picture when he was in, um, in India of, and visiting the village. So he okay. snapped the picture. And these are people from our village. Okay. But uh, he passed away many years ago. But two days before I left, this picture arrived from my cousin who said, I don't know anything about the village, but here's a picture that he provided, uh, that he took. And a day before I left, my step-cousin in Fiji said, look, I went to Garshankar, I went in search of the village, but I never found it. But the name of the village is Janodi, not Chadodi. So I was like, okay, Janodi, but I didn't find a Janodi, but I did find six miles away from Garshankar is Jandoli. Okay. I thought, Chadori, Jandoli, I mean, over the years, maybe the name was not correct because <clears throat> it, it had been many, many years. Well, what was interesting is, you know, I found Jandoli on the map and we drove to Jandoli and we found a courtyard and these people sitting there and we showed them this picture and they looked at it and they, they got the village elder to come, a nice um, regal gentleman who came and he looked at the picture and he said, I don't know about the picture or the house, but there's a guy in the picture. He looks like so-and-so and his house is up the road this way. He got into our vehicle. We drove to this house. People came out, looked at the picture. And with anticipation, I'm sitting there going like, oh my gosh, we are here. Until I saw the person who owned the house go like this. And then I realized, no, this isn't the house. And then he... Our, our the village elder said this isn't the right house but he said that the, he believes the house is you know um, down the road so he you know the elders in our vehicle we drive to another house and you know we get to this house and all of a sudden no it's not the right house maybe it's in the old part of the village so we drive he gets in the car we drive again and people people are very helpful but it's it's not the right place what we realized after doing five sort of explorations in this village of Jandoli, Jandoli was not the right village. And we drove back to this courtyard, you know, sat down. And I, and I really love what the people there said. You didn't find it. This isn't the right place, I guess. But you know what? Tomorrow, come back and be a part of our family. And I thought, how beautiful was that? Anything anyone had told me about... Uh, you know, the, the way people will react or act or, you know, they're going to give you a bad reception was gone. It disappeared and evaporated based on that one statement. I went back to the hotel 
and I phoned my father and I said, do you know what? It, I tried. It just, I, I don't know. And my father said, you know what? You've, you've done as good as, as best you can. It's okay. Um, enjoy India. But I said, no, no, I can't give up this early. So the next day my driver came back and my driver said, you know, what would you like to do? And I said, you know, let's forget what everybody said. Let's just drive to Garshankar. Let's go talk to people there. So we drove to Garshankar and yeah, there were people who were like, why are you looking? It's not going to work. You know, you know, you're wasting your time. But eventually one person said, oh, the village of Chadori. I'm not sure, but I think it's up the road this way. So we got some information and details. We drove along this roadway five, six miles. And we came to an archway. And this old man was seated at this archway. And we asked him, is this Chadori? He said, oh, yeah, this is Chadori. And then we showed him the photograph. And you have to remember, this person is like 80 years old, 70 years old. The picture is faded. I can't even make out the people. And he's looking at this picture. He goes, I think the person in the back looks like so-and-so. And at this point, I'm very guarded. I'm like, okay, here we go again. And not, you know, preparing myself for the inevitable. But instead, just like, okay, here we go again. So the old man gets in our car, which I expected because that's what people had done. We drive up to a driveway. He gets out with the photograph, walks up to a house, and I'm I'm in tow. I'm not far. And as he walks up, people come out, and they greet him, and they show this picture, and they to the people in the village, and you know this this picture, and this one lady, she looks at the picture with this white jundi, and she goes, "That's me in the picture. Who are you?" <laughs> and it was uh, it was amazing. I was like, "Wait, wait." did I hear you correctly? This is you in the picture? She goes, yeah, that's me in the picture. And I explained who I was. And the best way for me to describe it is all of a sudden, the realization hit me. I am, I am standing on the grounds where my grandfather left Punjab in 1905. I'm standing in front of his house. The people who I met so my Aja, my paternal grandfather, um, this was his older brother's family that I am now standing in front of. So you stand there going like, oh my gosh, I have just found my roots. And for me, persistence and overcoming obstacles, ambiguity and uncertainty, I want to pursue it. I went with Ziploc bags in my pocket with the hopes that I would find this village. I walked out into the fields. I scooped up dirt and I brought it home to my family so that they who will never be able to go to India actually have soil mitti from our lands. That's the story. And the book is Lost and Found, Seeking the Past, and finding myself, which is a very, um, it epitomizes what the journey and the story is because lost and found, our village was lost. My identity was lost, but I found both on this journey by seeking the past and finding myself. And that's where I stood. And that's the way that this journey has worked out. That's what happened. I can, I feel it. Uh, there is, uh, words will fail, but it's like <clears throat> you find dust. That's what you look for. Mm -hmm. Even the web telescope is doing the same. Yeah. A home somewhere. But at the end, from dust to dust, yeah, it's all the same thing. I guess the meaning always comes to that. Right. What Absolutely. you are inside and what you search for. Absolutely. So, <laughs> I, I understand even. I... You know, the feelings are such that when you go back to the roots, mm. uh, it's not about the people around. It's mm. about your attachment to the dirt that you picked up. Yes. From. The people will vanish. The yeah. winds will be there, will be telling the story yeah. that you 
you know, left, yeah. uh, what you call halfway yep. in, in the realm itself. So <laughs> talking now uh, about, you know, uh, about this travel and all. So uh, you say that it's about persistence, overcoming mm -hmm. obstacles and not listening to the, uh, to the noise, lesson for others. So in businesses, in our individual lives, Sam, mm -hmm. we are, you know, so much dominated by noise in mm -hmm. every sphere of our life that yeah. we tend to lose ourselves, lose either the voice of our conscience yeah. or lose the voice of our talent that we so inherently have given by mm -hmm. God, mm -hmm. you know, and yeah. we forget to just go out there and seek what God has given or to mm -hmm. seek ourselves and claim what is there waiting mm -hmm. for us. What would you like to tell? You see, you are you are a storyteller. You are a lecturer at, uh, at a business school. Uh, you know, you you are so many things and mm -hmm. you teach about finding yourself. Mm -hmm. So tell us about this part. Please. Of course, because again, uh, I've done two TEDx talks. The first was about personal storytelling, discover the extraordinary and the ordinary. And the second one is about how do you activate the voice within to be louder than the noise around you? There's a lot of noise, people telling you what to do and how to do it. But deep within is this voice, but how do you activate it? Right. So, you know, I've had about 5,000 conversations to date to help people in alignment. Because the idea is that they're, they're focused on what they do or they define themselves with what they do, not who they are. I mean, I look at it this way. If somebody was to say, you know, Sam, describe yourself. Who are you? Or what do you do? I would say, here's the way I, I, I do it. There are five things that guide and direct me in life. Servant leadership, story sharing, activator igniter, champion enabler, and community do-gooder. Those five things have enabled me to help individuals, teams, organizations, educational institutions, and nonprofits to their pinnacle best. But it's also enabled me to be a speaker and a storyteller, to be a mentor and coach, an author, blogger, writer, an entrepreneur, a problem solver, a community activator. So the idea is by understanding who I am, I'm able to identify opportunities. So for your audience, the idea is rather than focusing on defining yourself on what you do, start focusing and defining yourself by who you are. And it is a difficult journey to try to find who you are. Absolutely. And the way that I do this is it's through introspection and reflection. So I call myself the difficult monk. What I mean by that is people come to me looking for the answers to life. They see an individual who is an orange saffron bearded man on top of a mountain. Now in Vancouver, I live on top of a mountain. I have a beard, I have an orange shirt, but it's not a robe. The reason I'm a difficult monk is I am here not to tell you what to do, but I'm going to ask you questions. The answers you seek lie within you. My job is to ask questions, to pull that out of you. Absolutely. And one of the most important exercises or the most important thing I say is, is about discovering who you are. What are the five things that you are not willing to compromise in life and career? Not career, but life and career. So I gave you my five and I asked people, tell me one thing that you're not willing to compromise. And maybe they say family and I say, okay, but why is family important to you? And they tell me in deeper detail and they use the words, maybe uh, relationships and connectedness to my immediate family, et cetera. And I say, okay. And we, after a long discussion, I say, okay, you use the word relationships and connectedness. Does that apply to, you know, your work environment? Oh, absolutely. Does it apply to your when you were in school? Oh, for sure. Does it apply to your social life? Oh, I have to have that. So can we make one of your foundations that you are not willing to compromise relationships and connectedness? And they're like, oh, yeah. So that becomes one. You're able to change your five core elements at any time in your life. But think of it this way. To build a house you need a solid foundation. To build a life, you need a solid foundation. All I'm doing 
is asking you, what are the five things you're not willing to compromise? And don't align it to what you do presently. But when you have those five things, how many do you hit? And I will share with you that I've any project, anything, I've got 12 things I'm working on right now, but all 12 hit five out of five. When it hits five out of five, I don't have a job or career. I hit fulfillment. And that's how I like to help people is in their journey um, is to say, okay, how do we lay down your five core elements and then align it to the pathway that you need to go? And that's how you can realize your journey and who you are. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Sam, you say we all have a story. Mm -hmm. How how do people realize that they have a story? I ask you in Hindi, you will to Hindi. But I'll try and put it in both Hindi and English. You know, एक, एक Hindi ki baati kuch aur hai. I talk to people because a lot of people don't know Hindi. Yeah. But I would love to talk in Hindi and I talk to the Indian guests yeah. in, in Hindi and I would like to do mm -hmm. more in Hindi. I would like to ask you to ask के ट्रैवल करते हैं जिंदगी में कि बिजनेस है मेरे को ये करना है मुझे ये अचीव करना है एंड सम पीपल यू नो यू जस्ट टर्न 60 आई गेस इज इट एम आई राइट रॉन्ग हां जी यस हां जी आई जस्ट टर्न 60 यस बट यू डोंट लुक लाइक बट आई थिंक आई रेड इट वन ऑफ योर यू नो पोस्ट सो पीपल हु ग्रो अप 50 के बाद 60 के आसपास बहुत सारे लोगों को दे लिव विद रिग्रेट दैट आई डिड नॉट डू दिस I did not achieve this. Achha. You know, a lot of younger lot. Mm -hmm. ho jata hai ki kuch nahi kiya. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Pehle utna jada nahi tha, abhi jada hai. Mm -hmm. ko, wo jo feeling hai, wo nahi ho sakta. Mm -hmm. nahi. Everybody, as you said, has a story. Haan. God has sent you with a story, you know. Mm -hmm. And to waise logon ko kya kahenge? Why? What do, would you tell them? Yeah. That there is so much still to understand of your own life. What do you say in that? Yeah, okay. I'm talking Hindi, mein bolte, but also English. What do you think is good? My Hindi is not good because growing up in Canada, I mainly Bohut learned English. Bohut Bohut achha, achha. <laughs> um, I'm going to use a quote. Everyone's life is an autobiography. Make yours worth reading. Absolutely. Both important because we all are stories we are living stories and there's a need for us to share our stories i think the realization is uh, people are afraid so i always say nay nay you have something to share the modest story share it tell people let them learn from you um, it's the youth that I have a lot of time that I spend, whether I'm teaching in university or mentorship and coaching, because if I can get them started on the pathway early, then all of a sudden they're on a different trajectory because I've spoken to senior executives and companies, maybe five years away from retirement. And they're thinking, did I go in the right career after we have our conversation? I want to catch them early. But, but here's the problem. Too many people tell them what to do. Right. Don't tell them. Listen to them. I mean, if somebody wants to be a marketer, digital marketer, don't tell them, nay, pesa nay. No, no, we will both, you know, kama cha nay, nay. Instead, uh, accountant bano, lawyer bano, nay. But I tell the youth, if you want to be a digital marketer, and this means so much to you, do a, build a presentation, do your research, and tell them, do you realize this is how much money a digital marketer makes? Do you realize, you know, this, you know, Coke that you're drinking, do you know that this brand is worth billions and trillions of dollars? Do you realize somebody created this? And explain to them what it means. The more you explain... But you have to, but the young person has to do a lot of heavy lifting. In companies and businesses, 
the person is reflective of the business. You are not separate from the business and the, and the company. The story of you is the story of the business and embrace them. The first TEDx speech I did was personal storytelling, discovering the extraordinary and the ordinary. And think of it this way. We live in a world that is ordinary. It's our routine every morning. So then we wake up, we, we do our routine, have breakfast, you know, we go to work, we do our job, we come home, etc. Embedded in the ordinary are tremendous, extraordinary experiences. I'll give you a quick example because I know maybe we're short on time here. But let me give you an example of or extraordinary and ordinary. Okay, so here's a single piece of a jigsaw puzzle, right? Right. What can you do with one piece? If I give this to you, what can you do with one piece? Not much, right? This is what people feel like, that single piece of a jigsaw puzzle. Where do I fit in? What's the bigger picture? Right before your eyes, and magically, I'm going to make this extraordinary. Because instead of focusing on the ordinary, here's the extraordinary. I hold a satchel with puzzle pieces. If I give you my puzzle piece, do you realize my puzzle is incomplete without you? Do you realize how important you are to my puzzle? It's a reminder to people that in the ordinary is the extraordinary. And I've given over 5,000 pieces to remind people how important they are. I have people who have taped it onto the mirror to say, you know, it reminds me every morning someone told me I mattered. It's traveled in backpacks around the world. It's in wallets. I get people still sending me photographs five, six years later saying, I still hold your puzzle piece. That's extraordinary in the ordinary. So instead of focusing on the ordinary and everyday life, Go with your eyes open. And in the TEDx, what I shared was five things. I said, curiosity, appreciation, reflection, perspectives, and experience. Those are five things to help you realize the extraordinary and the ordinary and your personal stories. Right. so much to learn. And I understand that. So my last question is, huh. when you were standing there huh. and into the fields and you were scooping dirt, or soil, mitti. Mitti, huh. huh. why only soil? You huh. can buy the end, hmm. it's the, the soil that you find the most hmm. closest. How do you feel there? Huh. What made you do this? Huh. Mitti is an element of earth. Well, well, sub, you know, zindagi, sub, life, everything emerges out of the soil. Water, soil, everything. But the idea was I needed to bring something back. You know, Pitajiko, he has something from this village. And I found that the soil is very earthy, very grounded. You know, way Aja left. India But So this mitti was something that I needed to bring back that you could actually hold and the significance. It's it's more the significance of the earth, of, of the fact that this comes from our village. That's to me what was uh, such a grounding piece that I needed. On this note, mm -hmm. it's a wrap on this edition of the KJ Masterclass. Thank you so much indeed, sir. Shukriya.